Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to speed up your editing workflow in Logic by adopting some shortcuts, modifier keys, and workarounds for almost all of the edit tools in the tracks area. In some ways, this video is a follow-up to yesterday's video where I talked about 10 ways I use the marquee tool, and in that video I said that the marquee tool is, in my opinion, one of the most versatile tools in Logic other than the pointer tool. What I've found after almost two decades of using Logic is that about 95% of my editing workflow can be done with just the pointer tool and the marquee tool. None of these other tools are really even necessary if you know a few helpful shortcuts, modifier keys, and workarounds. You might not even realize how much time you waste by going back and forth and switching between different edit tools. Even if you use the tool menu where you press T to pull up different tools, you can still waste a lot of time this way. So in this video, I'm going to break down the main editing functions of each of the edit tools and then show you alternative ways of accessing these functions so that you almost never have to select another edit tool other than the pointer tool and marquee tools. Just a disclaimer, I'm not going to be demonstrating the flex tool at all in this video, and that's because we'd have to jump into flex time, which I also never use the flex tool for. I just use the pointer tool when using flex time. Okay, so let's start off with the pointer tool. Everyone knows the basic functions of the pointer tool. You can move regions around. You can trim regions if you hover over the left or right lower side of the region. And you can also loop regions if you hover over the upper right corner of a region. You can click and loop out. You can also hold Option while dragging a region to duplicate it. Next, let's move on to the Pencil tool. Now, the Pencil tool outside of automation has two main functions in the Tracks area. One, you can use this to create new MIDI regions. And if you hover over an audio region using the Pencil tool, it does nothing. However, if you hover over an empty area on an audio track and click, this will bring up the import audio dialog. However, you do not need to use the pencil tool to import audio. All you have to do is select the audio track that you want to import audio to, set the playhead where you want the audio to be imported, and then press shift command I, and this will bring up that exact same import audio dialog. The one thing that you can do with the pencil tool that you cannot do with the pointer tool is draw in freehand automation. So if I press A to bring up my automation and then use my pencil tool, I can draw in freehand automation. However, if you want to just draw in linear automation, you can still use the pointer tool for this. You just can't get that freehand automation. However, most of the time when I'm drawing in freehand automation, I use a MIDI controller instead because it gives me more tactile control over the function I'm trying to write in. So that's one function that you cannot do with the pointer tool. The eraser tool is pretty self-explanatory. If you click on a region, it will delete the region. However, you can simply just do this with the pointer tool. Click on a region, hit delete on your keyboard, and you're good to go. The one function of the eraser tool that is separate from the pointer tool is when using flex time. So if I turn on flex time, I turn on flex on this audio track. Maybe I quantize some of these to a 16th note. Using the eraser tool, you can actually click and swipe over flex markers to remove them. However, there is a workaround. If you use the marquee tool instead, select the area where you want to remove those markers, click to separate, then right click or control click at the top of the region and select reset all flex edits. This will get rid of those flex markers. So that's a workaround, but I think the eraser tool is actually a bit better if you just want to come in here and click and swipe to remove flex markers. But outside of flex time, I don't need to use the eraser tool at all. The text tool allows you to rename regions. So you can just click and then rename the region. However, there is a shortcut for this. If you just select a region and press Shift N, this will allow you to rename that audio region. So again, I can click here, Shift N. I can rename this MIDI region. If I select more than one region and then press Shift N and I name this Disco Base 1, it will actually name these in a sequence. So you can see Disco Base 1 and Disco Base 2. Alternatively, you can select multiple regions and press Shift Option N, and this will rename all of those regions 
based on the name of the corresponding track that they're on. So that's a little workaround to never have to use the text tool again. The scissors tool is known for separating or splitting audio or MIDI regions. However, there is a workaround for this as well. If you set the playhead where you want to split and then just select that region, you can press Command T to separate that region. So if I move over here, select that region, Command T, that will separate or split that region. And most other trimming can also be achieved just by using the marquee tool instead. So if I just wanted to drag over an area and delete it, I could easily do that using the marquee tool. I can easily trim with the marquee tool as well, just by dragging over something and hitting delete. And likewise, you can make double separations, where you make a selection and click, and this will separate this region from the rest of the region. I can pull it out, I can duplicate it, I can do anything I want with it. The one thing that the scissors tool does that the pointer tool and marquee tools cannot do is cut regions of equal length or equal duration. So for example, if I use my beat snap and I make a cut here at beat two with the scissors tool, this will just cut this into two regions. However, if I hold option, this will cut this into regions of equal length or equal duration. If I split right here at the bar line and hold option, now these will be all one bar in length. If I do it here at bar three, now they'll all be two beats in length. So that's one function uh, that you can only do with the scissors tool. Now, once you've split up a bunch of regions, whether they're audio regions or MIDI regions, you can use the glue tool to glue these back together or join them back together. So you just select those regions, use the glue tool, and it sort of consolidates them back together. However, you can actually use the shortcut J to join MIDI regions back together. And you can also use this to consolidate audio regions. The only difference here is it's going to create a new audio file when you join audio regions back together. But most of the time when you're using a consolidate function like this, you want to create a new audio file anyway, because I might have multiple regions sort of duplicated like this. I might have edited things. And then I want to drag over all of these, press J to join or consolidate them back together as a new audio file. So just by knowing that shortcut J, this allows you to get around having to use the glue tool in most situations. The solo tool is kind of a useless tool in my opinion. What the solo tool does is it turns on solo mode and solos an individual region. The only time this is really helpful is during playback. So as you can see, it sort of functions like a scrub tool during playback, but I actually find the control S shortcut to turn on solo mode much easier for using this. So if I select a region and press control S, this will just turn on solo mode for this region and I can just press play. If I want to hear another region, I just select another region and solo mode will just carry over. And you can click up here to turn off solo mode or just press control S again to toggle on or toggle off. So again, I find the solo tool kind of useless and I find using solo mode an easier way to get this same functionality. The mute tool allows you to mute individual regions. And most of you guys already know this one already, but if you just select a region and press control M, this will also mute the region without having to even use the mute tool. And then you can just press control M again to unmute the regions. The zoom tool allows you to zoom in on a selection. Now, most of the time I just use command left and right and up and down to zoom. The zoom tool is actually pretty helpful if you just wanna zoom over a certain area, like if I just wanna see these two regions, I can drag over an area with the zoom tool and it'll zoom in on that selection. Then I can click again with the zoom tool to zoom back out. However, if you're using the pointer tool, you can actually press control and option at the same time, and this will pull up the exact same zoom function. So just drag over while holding control and option, then hold control option again and click to zoom back out. And another helpful bonus zoom function is just to click on the background to deselect everything and press Z to auto zoom everything to fit the window. So again, the zoom tool is kind of useless as long as you know a few basic zoom commands. 
Next up is the fade tool. The fade tool can be used to add fades and crossfades to audio regions. So if you just drag over the right or left boundary of any audio region, this will create a fade in or a fade out. If you use the fade tool on the center of the fade, you can adjust the curve of the fade, and you can also adjust the length of the fade here. And you can also hold option with the fade tool to quickly remove fades. However, like with most of these tools, there's really no need to use the fade tool. If you hold shift and control, you can drag over the ends of any region to create fade ins or fade outs. You can hold shift and control while using the pointer tool to adjust the curve of a fade. And you can also use it to adjust the length of a fade. The only thing you can't do is you can't hold option to quickly remove fades. In order to remove fades with the pointer tool, you just have to right click or control click on the fade and select remove fade in or remove fades. Likewise, if you have a separated region, maybe something like this, and you wanna create a crossfade, you can just hold shift and control again, drag over the joining point with the pointer tool to create a crossfade. And once again, you can hold shift and control with the pointer tool to adjust the length and placement of the crossfade. Next up are the automation select and curve tools. So I'll press A to bring up automation. I have some pan automation drawn in here. So this track is gonna start on the right side and then just move over to the left side. Now let's say I wanted this to be a repeating effect to get move back and forth between the right and left speakers. You could use the automation select tool to select the automation, and then you can continue using the automation select tool to move that automation around, and you can hold option as well to duplicate the automation. However, the automation select tool is just not necessary at all. You can actually just drag over automation. Again, with just the pointer tool, you can move it around. And again, just with the pointer tool, you can hold option and duplicate. So I really find the automation select tool kind of pointless because all of its functionality can be done with the pointer tool. I know there was a time in earlier versions of Logic where you couldn't edit automation and you had to use the automation select tool for editing like this, but you no longer have to do that. You can even drag over automation and then click and drag up or down to edit the scaling of the automation or flip the automation. The last tool I'm gonna to cover is the Automation Curve Tool. With the Automation Curve Tool, you can drag up or down to create logarithmic or exponential automation shapes, and you can drag left and right to create two different S-curve shapes. Well, like with all of these other examples, you do not need the Automation Curve Tool to do this. Using just the Pointer Tool, you can hold Shift and Control, and this will allow you to create automation curves, and while holding Shift and Control, you can drag left and right to create S-shaped curves as well. So if I wanted to do something like this, I could very easily go through and shape these automation curves any way I like, just using the pointer tool. So hopefully this video has helped out to demonstrate some different workarounds, shortcuts, and modifier keys so that you never have to use any of these other edit tools again. Like I said, about 95% of the time, I feel like I can get my work done with just the marquee tool and the pointer tool alone. And all of these other edit tools, there are workarounds in place that make it not necessary to even use them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.